Hi there Titans, my name is Paige and today we are going to be exploring something brand new here at Titan. This is Titan Flows and Titan Flows are really going to help all of those who are visual learners, those who like to see the concepts, how they play out, how different elements are interacting with one another. I'm very excited to show you this and learn this with you today. Um, in this example, it's going to be very, very basic because we are all learning this together in real time. So what my example is going to do, we're going to have our user fill out their first name and last name. And then when they click on this button, if both of these are filled, then it will create a contact. If it is not filled, then it will give them an error message to say, hey, both of these fields need to be filled to create the contact. Um, after that is done, after they create the contact, then it is going to go to page two. Let me show you page two real quick. Let's go to page two. Then on page two, after the page is loaded, then it will load this get. It's a power table that is just bringing back the contact that was created on the previous page. And then once that is that get is complete, then this URL field will be populated with the titandxp.com URL. So that is what we're going to do. And you may be thinking, hey, I know how to do that already, but you do not know how to do it with flows. So let's look at that. So here we'll go to our hyperlink, which usually this is just like our on-click action. Whoops, I gave you a preview. <laughs> so this is what you are used to seeing when you click on the hyperlink or create an on-click action. But we now have the um, ability to create these actions through flows. So when you switch over to actions flow, you can see that there is a flow that is taking place at the click of this button. And so this is a very visual way for people to be able to see exactly what is happening under what conditions and when. And I think this is really, really cool for you and all of our teams because we will be able to accomplish so much more through our Titan web experience with this functionality. So let me just go ahead and delete all of these things so that we can build it back together. I'm going to go ahead and delete and then we can start brand new. So when, let's scroll in a little bit, when they click on this button, this is a start. So imagine they click the button. Now we're starting. The first thing that I want to do, and today we're only going to cover these um, nodes right here, condition, Salesforce action, affected elements, redirect, go to page, and so show message. So we're only going to cover these five. Of course, there are lots of other options here. And for those who are familiar with Titan Web, this should be a very um, easy transition because all of these actions are things that you're already working with. This is just a way to visualize the process flow within each action that takes place. So let's get started by adding in an if condition. So if my first name field is not empty and my last name field is not empty, and that's our first, our first step. So it's just if then, then I can click next. We're going to give this a tag. These tags are very important so that you know what all of these nodes mean. So here now you can see and we're able to move our um, nodes around. This helps us to just um, visualize our process flow and action flow better. <clears throat> okay, so if first and last name is not empty, so now we can add what happens for both of these outcomes. So if it's not empty, then I'm going to create the contact. And you can see that I already have the create contact action set in my Salesforce push. And then I'm going to return the record ID to my global parameter. So I'll call this one create contact insert. Now what happens when the first and last name is, is still empty? Then I'm going to show a message that says 
Okay. First and last name must be filled to create this contact. Next. We'll call it error message. We're going to insert it. And then we're able to move it around. So I'm going to put it over here so that I can see everything nice and easily. And if you want to remove the relationship between different nodes, then you can just click on the X. Let me zoom in a little bit. You can remove it. There we go. And then we can reconnect it as well, just like that. Okay, so after we create this contact, you can see that we can put actions on during integration, after finish, and on cancel. And we could do that before as well. So um, this is just a way to visualize all those processes that you were building out um, previously. All right, so after finish, we want to redirect, go to page, and it's going to be an internal page, and that's going to be page two. So I can click next, and I'm going to say go to page two. All right, so after we create the contact, we're going to go to page two, and then after we go to page two, we are going to get that power table. So the Salesforce action, choose next, and I've already set up my git for the power table. I'm going to choose next and I'm going to say git table. Okay. Now, after this is finished, and again, you can see during integration after finish on cancel, this is where I'm going to affect the elements in that page two. Go to all. And at the bottom, we can see our URL field and I'm going to set the value to be HTTPS okay perfect apply next fill URL is what I'll call that one and so now we have demonstrated all five of those first nodes. So the full process will be, let's just review. <clears throat> they click the button. That is our starting point. If the first and last name is not empty, then it will create a contact. If it is still empty, then they'll get the error message. After they create the contact, after that is finished, it's going to redirect to page two. It's going to get the table, and then it's going to fill the URL in page two. All right, so then I can click apply and save. All right, let's test this together. So at first, I'm just going to test what it looks like when the um, first and last name are not filled. So here is that. Hey, first and last name must be filled to create this contact. That's awesome. So that first condition is working. All right, so at this now, because they are both filled and not empty, then the contact should be created. We'll go to the next page. The table will load and the URL, URL will load as well. So let's watch that play out. All right, it's looking good. We have our contact populated and that URL field. And although this, this functionality that I've showed you today is things that you probably could have done before, um, the idea of being able to see this flow play out and visualize the concepts within this Titan Web projects are really going to maximize our very complex Titan Web solutions. So I really hope that you like the idea of flows, play around with it, and yeah, I'm really excited to see what we can do together with this.